Hello and welcome to Vision This Week on Channel's Television. I'm Bukola Joe Oketumbi. A national carrier is said to be an embassy of a country on wings. On the program today, we take a look at the proposed national carrier that the present administration is hopeful to birth, as Lufthansa Consulting has to be excused from the project. Plus, British Prime Minister Theresa May visits the aircraft maker Bombardier's facility in Northern Ireland. And our background report is up next. The aviation industry is a catalyst for social economic development anywhere. It also provides the fastest and safest means of transportation of persons and cargo within and between countries, thereby promoting commerce and industry. And this transportation cannot occur without airlines. An airline is a company that provides air transport services for traveling passengers and freight. Many countries have national airlines, or what is described as national carriers, that the government owns and operates. Since 2003, when Nigeria wound down its former national carrier, Nigeria Airways, successive governments have toiled with the idea of having another one with no apparent success. Although Virgin Nigeria was established in 2004 to effectively replace the defunct Nigeria Airways in partnership with Virgin Airlines. Virgin withdrew from the business in 2008 to 2010. Following two name changes, Air Nigeria announced on September the 6th, 2012, that it had made its staff redundant and ceased operations on September the 10th, 2012. And now, the present government insists its plans are in top gear for a national airline, but aviation experts appear divided over the issue. Our government policies are killing the airlines, and the airlines are killing themselves. So. If the policies that we're talking about too many taxes, AON has said it again and again, everything they listed in the argument is true. Those problems will kill those airlines if not seriously addressed. Give back to a national carrier tomorrow that Mr. President promised, those problems will kill that airline or burn. But those problems must be addressed. And while government is making an effort to address those problems, the airlines put their acts together. Ethiopian is, is, is a home by government. Are you with me? It's not, it's, not, it's not publicly owned. So we can do things. And the other people that are, home, that are publicly owned are doing well also. Let's just do it well. We need to do things well and remove all those things that make us uh, uh, look most unserious. Good corporate governance is important. You must also be credit worthy. Then you can attract the necessary financing. The money is there outside. It's not in Nigeria, it's outside. But if they know that, if they bring the money in, if I go to squander it, go to end up somebody's pocket, then it won't come. So those are the things we need to do. Nigerian passengers also share their views and concerns over the idea of a new airline. There's need for a um, national carrier in Nigeria because Nigeria is not the poorest of the nations. If you look around the world, you see that most countries have their national carrier just an identity so it's good if it's to be private driven it's also going to save government some expense so it could be done jointly with the private sector my fears are three one the demons that killed the former nigerian airways are still uh, alive the powers that turned nigerian airways to nigerian airways are going up and down now the pythons that swallowed millions in jam, have many relatives and, and friends that are walking up and down. And my fear is that they, they will still do what they did to Nigerian Airways, to the new one. And if government is going ahead, how shall the new airline run? If government can be able to do by being sincere enough, give it to a renowned uh, private sector that can handle it, or everyone can stick right and be by themselves, I felt it will be okay. Because uh, the idea of uh, having this uh, 
uh, my people to run it is another thing. If they are fair enough, let it be national, national career, that would be nice. Because the uh, idea of uh, giving it to one person to run it, another person to oversee it is another thing. They are just like individual private companies. And uh, national career will bring uh, Agira to the, to, to, the, to the nation. And uh, by doing so, they are going to generate employment. And uh, other things might have to actually come in. Like other countries have their own uh, national career, which Nigeria is big enough to have a natural career. And being the, be, 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 be all, be all, all things being called, I feel that private are to stay on their own, but another country to, to be on their own. Other challenges Nigerian airlines face include their inability to obtain foreign exchange to maintain their aircraft, carry out training of their personnel, and buy spares. Although the Central Bank of Nigeria gave them a window, but they say that giving out huge amount of Naira to be exchanged after three to four months is not enough because on regular basis, airlines need Forex. According to the World Bank, every 1% of government funds spent on infrastructure leads to an equivalent 1% increase in gross domestic product GDP. A national carrier will, to some extent, help the infrastructure deficit by providing regular, affordable transportation to major cities. A national carrier will, to some extent, help the infrastructure deficit by providing regular and affordable transportation to major cities across the country. The proposed national carrier is in the works with a little hiccup here and there. But the Minister of State for Aviation, Hadi Sirika, recently visited the Lagos airport and it brings Nigerians up to speed with the project. We substituted Lufthansa Consulting as part of the consortium to provide transaction advisory services for establishment of the national carrier. And the reason is very simple and clear. Um, we thought that Lufthansa Consulting is an arm of... Lufthansa Airline Group, and we thought this would compromise the process. Uh, this, because they may be an interested party uh, later in the day of this procurement. So we thought that um, being them interested party will compromise the system, will compromise the activity, which we want it to be as open, as transparent, as clear, as fair, as equitable as it should be. That's why. And of course, uh, Lufthansa by themselves weren't able to accept or sign the contract or accept the offer in writing. They counted the offer that we gave to them after Federal Executive Council has approved, after Bureau of Public Procurement had approved and gave us no objection certificate. Later and late in the day, they introduced new terms. For example, they wanted an escrow account to be open uh, outside the country and all the money is deposited there. And they be paid um, in excess of 15%. They wanted about 75% be paid to them up in issue. And uh, this is not in line with the procurement laws. And the contract was in Naira, 341,200,000. But they want to change it into euros, which is also not accepted by us because, and more importantly also, they wanted to provide the service only to the limit of the outline business case. And this is neither in our request for proposal nor in what the council has approved. So it was impossible for us to continue the procurement with Lufthansa Consulting. So what we did, because there are many in the consortium, we substituted them with another company that is um, even, that is uh, fair, that has no uh, appendage or is not appendage to any other company that might be interested. So more of neutral company took over the space of Lufthansa. Where are we? Where uh, are we is that I think in the next couple of months, one month to two months maximum by March, we should be able to have our outline business case for this uh, transaction. And then the full business case will follow almost immediately after because they are going in simultaneously. And after that, we begin the process to establish. So I would say that we are very, very close to having uh, the national career established. Certainly, it will be within the first term of this administration. The issue of the Lufthansa Consulting, part of what they required for us for the national carrier was that uh, they wouldn't be charged any taxes and this is against our laws. Nigeria is among the first 11 countries that went to Yamasukuru and took a decision to liberalize the sector and open the skies for Africa. 
and this means growth this means development this means more job this means more security and this means more connectivity this means more passenger experience and comfort so arising from that and Nigeria being a signatory to that the single African air transport market became the issue and Nigeria also joined to become the first 23 countries to make that solemn declaration uh, on single African air transport market and I think Nigeria with a population of 173 million people half the size of West Africa will be the greatest beneficiary to this at the time Nigeria was pushing for this uh, you and I know we had the Nigeria Airways and we thought we would take advantage of it. Now we don't and our airlines have somehow for one reason or another have not grown to that capacity and this is why government felt that we should um, set, the, set, the, um, um, set, set in motion to create a robust carrier that will take advantage of all of this single African air transport market for the benefit of Nigerian people. So I believe that we are on right course. I believe that this private sector led and driven airline once established it will become the dominant carrier in Africa